Okay. Morning rounds. It does desat overnight. It did drop to 84 percent. The urgency is constant. My hemoglobin went from 99 to 72. Oof. Do you want to recheck it? Yeah. Could you just like stat recheck it? Yeah. And if it's 72, just give another two units. In the intensive care unit at Royal Columbian Hospital, the focus is on patients. More recently, though, also on those who care for them. Often, healthcare workers are not uh, explicit when they need help. As we move into another transition period in the COVID-19 pandemic, an alarm sounds about a wave of a different kind. I think we all have a, a level of PTSD coming out of this pandemic. The pandemic has had an impact on medical professionals at work and at home. It's really difficult to go home and decompress when you've um, seen multiple patients uh, pass away in a short amount of time. Um, trying to unwind and actually get to bed or um, to kind of vent or get your feelings out. So I actually live with some roommates who have become my family in this time period too that are just amazing. And we actually all got COVID in January. During the Omicron phase, COVID hit numerous healthcare workers and their families. I was positive, so we just came to the conclusion that we're all positive. The frontline fight against the pandemic has been relentless, and for some, doubled the impact. ICU nurse Dave Riar's wife also works in this unit. Some people think it's harder. I think it's kind of easier because she actually understands where I come from. I'm a little bit more full-time and beyond compared to her because she's gone a little bit more part-time because of the kids. Um, but there's an understanding as to where that fatigue may come from and, and the burnout. Children of medical professionals have also become more exposed to the inner workings of their parents' careers. As a teenager, there's that process of eventually learning that your parents are people, right? And so um, one of the things is seeing the, the challenges that we were going through and seeing that we're fallible and uh, and that we were struggling with things at time. Since we were last here, Dr. Reynolds has stepped away from his role as site medical director at RCH. The burden was too tough. Hi, Dad. <laughs> hey, guys, how you doing? The baseline went from uh, a pretty cheery and bubbly guy, uh, was he was sort of constantly in that uh, defense mode, you know? Um, he'd constantly been working uh, for 12 hours a day or something like that every single day rather than just for a week a month. In the Reynolds family, both parents are physicians at different hospitals, but both work in COVID units. I really, really stressed myself out in terms of like what the impact would be if I got COVID because then I would give it to my parents and like I thought of to my dad about how huge, like I think he made such a big impact at the hospital. And so him being gone and if he was out of service for like two weeks, there wasn't anybody that could step in. It was super stressful that I would be around people who weren't necessarily being as safe as I was, and that through that, I would give it to him, and then I would be responsible for all the chaos and things that would come after that, and that was like a lot, a lot of stress. I'm just giving your antibiotics here, okay? ICU staff have been the closest to the pandemic pressure and risk. Sometimes you go home and you're just exhausted, and sometimes you feel like you're okay, but adrenaline builds up when you're working, and and you're busy and uh, it's one thing after the other but when you're at home and on your days off you just feel extremely exhausted and you just don't want to do anything and burnout creeps up on you and it's hard to recognize sometimes until it just really hits you. The sickest of the sick have been in this unit over the past two years. At the height of the pandemic this 16-bed ICU became a COVID ICU at times operating at twice its capacity these days, there's a handful of COVID patients. Teams have started to go back to normal. Work has started to go back to normal. Individuals, perhaps not so much. Well, I think that some of the stuff I've seen, like I, I, I can't unsee some of that stuff and it's been really difficult to process. How has it changed you as a person though? Changed me as a person. I think it's made me not desensitized, but more like having hardiness, I would say. The battle against COVID has been long. The recovery from it will be longer. Bell Peary, CBC News, New Westminster.